Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me again. My friend tonight is a member of one of Israel's most prominent families in the business and philanthropic world. Uh, he was born in New York, actually. Uh, he is the grandson of Leon Recanati, the leader of the Jewish community in Thessaloniki, who immigrated to Israel in 1935 and founded the Israel Discount Bank, as well as settlements and neighborhoods in pre-state Israel. He is the eldest son of Rafael Recanati, who ran the Israel Discount Bank's branch in New York and later served as the bank's managing director. He came to Israel at the age of 16. He studied at the Hebrew uh, Herzliya Gymnasium in Tel Aviv, Gymnasium, I should say, and served as an IDF Artillery Corps officer. He holds a BA in Humanities. Wow, I learned a lot about you from the Hebrew University in Jerusalem and an MBA from Tel Aviv University. Upon the passing of his father, Raphael, he was named chairman of the Swiss bank DBTC. Then uh, he retired from IDB and a year later founded Naftali Investments, his current uh, company. Uh, philanthropically, thanks to his vision and that of Professor Uriel Reichmann, the Raphael Recanati International School named after his late father, was established in 2001 with the aim of deepening the connection between diaspora Jewry and the state of Israel. He and his children are part owners of Maccabi Tel Aviv, the most successful basketball team in Israel's history. And most recently, lucky for me, we partnered to produce Azimuth, the movie that I wrote and directed commemorating the 50th anniversary of the Six Day War. And so, Direct from his home in Israel, I am so, so pleased to have him join me. Udi Rekanati, hi, my friend. How are you? It looks like, it looks like you're in San Francisco. Wait a minute. Well, you know, uh, I move <laughs> around on, uh, on the room. I'm allowed to change, uh, change the background, so it gives me a feeling that I'm moving around a lot. Oh, You're not staying on, on, uh, on Israeli soil all the time. It suits you, you know. Uh, we we can sing the I left my heart in Pet in Pet <laughs> Well, they're also with really, you know, uh, Eric Einstein, uh, San Francisco a la main. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me, no, I, I I I had to read. You know, when you reach my age, you got to read with glasses. But I wanted to, for my friends to know a little bit about you because you are my dear friend uh, among all what I just uh, read about you. Most importantly, uh, we have been friends for a long time. We'll, we'll talk about that a little later. But first of all, you know, we're talking right now. Uh, it is nighttime in Los Angeles. It's morning uh, where you are. And uh, we are in the midst of, uh, of this worldwide uh, crisis and, uh, you know, pandemic. We're in the middle of July. And it's getting worse here. What's happening over there? Uh, how are you coping? How are you getting along? And, and I hear it's getting, you know, pretty bad. It is getting pretty bad. And uh, in reality, it's the second, it's the second wave, they, they're calling it, that hit us, uh, which is worse than the first one. And uh, uh, there's, there's a feeling that uh, it's a little bit out of hand and that, that people don't exactly know um, how to take care of it. The government has put on uh, new restrictions since uh, the, this last week. And um, it looks like we're going to a second lockdown. I, I don't know if it'll be a complete lockdown or a little less, but um, the numbers are very high. We're, we're close to 2,000 a day. And uh, luckily, that the mortality rate is yeah, 18, 1,900 a day. And um, and in reality, uh, we are going to um, either have to cope with it in a very strong way, or you know, let, let it do its course. Because a lot of people are saying, "Look, we can't shut down the economy anymore." A lot of people are already uh, having a lot of difficult problems, and uh, even people are saying that they have no money to eat. And um, it's becoming it's becoming very difficult, uh, and I think that the economic problem is even worse than the than the uh, health one. 
but uh, we should overcome. I mean, we've done it before, not in pandemics. This is new to, I think, Israel. But uh, we've done it before in wars and other things that we've shut ourselves down and then the economy came back and I'm sure we'll do it here too, but it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt. And it is hurting. And what about schools? Uh, you know, actually, you know, it's so similar to what's happening. California, you know, is really the fifth largest economy in the world, just the state of California. And everything now, uh, the governor yesterday uh, said, okay, we got to, sh- they, they claim we're still in the first round, you know, that it's the end of the first round, but uh, they're going to close down here as well. They opened too soon and, and it was doing pretty well, pretty well here. Uh, so I guess it's it's a global problem, and uh, who knows? We have to, uh, you know, get used to a new reality and a new way of life because it's going to be with us for a while. But I understand some of the research, some of the best research that's going on for a either a vaccine or a solution or some kind of treatment is uh, going on in Israel right now. Well, quite a bit of it is going on in Israel <clears throat> and at the Weizmann Institute and uh, at Sohek. Uh, but uh, I hear that the most advanced today are really uh, Oxford and uh, and uh, Moderna, an American company, right. uh, who are uh, who have a vaccine apparently and they're testing it now. We'll see, but this this will take time. I mean, the earliest I hear is that towards the end of the year they might have a vaccine. But then to start producing fantastic quantities is going to take time. <clears throat> you know, uh, I'm so lucky that uh, since I started this uh, channel, uh, I've been very lucky to have so many friends join me, personal friends of mine, from so many different uh, 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 phases of uh, of work or, you know, celebrity and uh, uh, diplomacy. Uh, but uh, you are one of my best friends uh, in the field of business. And from what I hear, uh, what is the business community uh, thinking about the near future uh, in Israel? How has it affected your community? You know, uh, investments, businesses, you know, uh, Israel, the, the high tech industry uh, is so uh, immense in Israel. Uh, what's what's the effect and what is the outlook? Look, I'd say at best it's in a slowdown uh, or maybe a complete halt. If you're if you're looking, let's say high tech is is working a little. Uh, they they are continuing. There are less uh, more people working from home and uh, and less people in the businesses themselves. The rest of the community, I think, is divided in two. If we're talking about the larger companies, those who give services, I'm talking like supermarkets and uh, you know, uh, um, those who can continue to work are doing fantastically well. Um, uh, people need them and uh, they're buying. Um, on the other hand, naturally, those who give services of any kind, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Airlines, uh, anything in the tourism industry, uh, hotels um, are doing terribly, and uh, and the restaurants who in Israel have usually done extremely well uh, find themselves in a situation where they, they for instance, yesterday, I'll give me an example, they were closed down from five o'clock in the afternoon, and then afterwards uh, <coughs> there was a, uh, a revolution of some of the uh, best. Uh, best restaurants in Israel, and they came back and said, no, no, we're not going to close. So the government reconsidered, and they said they're leaving them open until Tuesday. So I don't know what Tuesday is going to give and what they're going to do, but the idea was to close down weekends and to close down evenings. So if you do that, naturally what's going to happen is that the restaurants will all start folding. I know that probably a large percentage of them are already folding. and oh. uh, having. But I think it's all, all over the world it's the same thing. I don't know how... Anybody can survive, uh, you know, when, when you rely on your cash flow for a daily, for daily income, you find yourself in a situation where you can't cope with it. And I was, I've been speaking to some of my colleagues in Israel, in, in our industry, in the entertainment industry, and uh, it's been uh, five months now that uh, all the entertainment 
venues in Israel are closed down as they have been here, but it's affecting so many, uh, both the, the uh, upper echelons of the actors and entertainers, but also the, you know, the run of the mill uh, entertainers, orchestras that depend on what we used to call the chalturas, you know, the gigs, and yeah. obviously weddings, bar mitzvahs, all that, oh. the, the daily, you know, bread and butter, and uh, it is getting to be very difficult uh, because uh, there's uh, nothing happening, there's no income. And no, I'm, not at all. And what I what I understand is that uh, the government is trying to find ways to help. I think it's very difficult to do it. Uh, um, I know that in the theater industry, that they are they're giving them uh, grants to try to keep them afloat. But you know, in uh, in Israel, as you well know, uh, the uh, salaries for Actors is not exactly a salary that keeps you. Uh, it keeps you in uh, five star hotels. No, um, you barely make it. Uh, make it by. But so in reality, I think that uh, they are. Uh, they are uh, trying to help. Uh, I, I think that they're kicking a little bit too much in the wrong ways. Uh, they decided to give out the grants to every Israeli, a little bit like the uh, like the Americans did. Uh, but in, she in shekels, not in dollars. In shekels, yeah, <laughs> in shekels, yeah. 750 shekel per person, and families get more. But uh, yeah, I guess he, he got that from, from uh, your president. Yeah. Tell me, what about, uh, for example, economically, the stock market in Israel? Uh, it's been doing relatively well, uh, surprisingly well, like in the States. I mean, uh, if you ask me, I can't understand it exactly. Uh, I think what they're trying to do, I mean, they're, they're companies like Amazon, um, for instance, that's been doing extremely well, or, or you can find others that are doing well. But yeah, I think it's, um, the stock market is surprisingly holding out. Uh, not, not where it was, but definitely it's still holding. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about now uh, our, our friendship that goes back uh, a long way. And it was uh, actually rekindled about, uh, I'd say about five years ago. Um, if you remember, uh, I ran into uh, the Wolf's uh, the father and son uh, right. here at the uh, Israel Film Festival in Los Angeles. Uh, he, um, Amir, was it right? Right. Uh, and he had just uh, directed a wonderful film uh, that you had produced uh, along with his father. And they came to show it at the Israel Film Festival here in LA, we met. And they said, you know who's looking for you? Your old friend, Udi Rekanati, he hasn't seen you in a while. And I said, oh my God, when you get back to Israel, uh, please give him a call, he wants to see you. And that's how we reconnected after many years. But it goes back even long before that. It goes back to, to Shike Vedetsky, to uh, that's right. That's uh, right. Shua, who was your father's uh, chauffeur right. for many years. Right. Talk about that a little bit. How? how... Well, it, it really is a funny story because uh, we do go back a long way. And uh, like you said, I, I came to live in Israel in 1965 when I was 16 years old. And um, I went to Gymnasia Herzliya uh, in Tel Aviv. And um, my father hired a driver. He wasn't in Israel all the time. He was in Israel part-time, but uh, back and forth between New York and Israel. And I lived there uh, the first year at my uncle's house. And then after that, I lived, uh, my mother came to be with me in my last year, my senior year of high school in Israel. That was the year of the Six Day War. And anyway, uh, coming back to Yoshua Vitetsky, who, who was our driver and a great guy, and uh, he, you were always his idol. My friend Mike Porsche, my friend Mike Porsche. And look, you, you were a star. Kuni Lemel, I mean, you know, in Israel, when we saw Kuni Lemel, and, uh, and you, were, you were one of the hottest names in, in show business. Yeah. You still are, by the way. And. Uh, um, and as you can imagine, uh, so uh, that, and once he, he, 
he introduced both of us. And uh, at that time, you were older than me. I mean, you still I'm are. Still, I'm still older than you. <laughs> that has, you're catching up, but that hasn't changed. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, and we, we, we had a conversation. And then I think we saw each other once or twice in different places and this and that. And then, and all the time, you know, it's somehow uh, friendships are things that are, are built and you feel that you know the person so well that when we rekindled our friendship five years ago, when we went, I think we went to dinner for the first time, right. and uh, we sat down, uh, the four of us uh, with our spouses, and we started talking. It was as if we rekindled an old, old friendship, and uh, we hit it off very, very quickly. And I must say that, uh, that as my wife said, luckily that Mike is married, because otherwise I might leave her for him. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, no chance. But, uh, I don't think uh, no, Fiona wouldn't no, agree. I must say. But, but stay, no, we stay really had a lot of fun together and we enjoyed spending time together. So we still do, but unfortunately, we do it now by FaceTime or, or Zoom or whatever. Well, and, uh, you know, this too shall pass and uh, they are and hopefully as soon as we can, you know, we'll get on a plane because right now you can't even get on a plane to Israel. But uh, then um, very shortly after that, uh, I brought an idea to you uh, that I had been holding on. We were just coming up to 2017, which was going to be the 50th uh, commemoration of the Six Day War. And I had an idea that I had been, you know, uh, thinking about since the actually since right after the war the story that i got from uh moshe nachshon who was a my my attorney uh he gave it to me after the war and i brought you a treatment uh or a synopsis i think it was about this story about uh two soldiers an egyptian and an israeli who meet uh at the end of the war and i said you know i think that i've always wanted to direct and I think this is the right time to direct a film. And this is what I've been holding on to all these years. And it's timing is everything in life. You read it and immediately you said, I'm in, you know, uh, let's do it. And lo and behold, it took us a while uh, to get the uh, other half of the investment. But we, you finally convinced uh, Moshe Edri, our dear friend, to join us. And uh, I'm going to put up some, you know, uh, some photos uh, when I edit this uh, of the movie. It's called Azimut. And I am forever grateful to you for uh, having been the one to believe in this project and believe in me. And I think we can be very proud of, of the film. So I am, I am very proud. I'm, first of all, happy that you came to me with it. And like you said, uh, you sold me on the idea right away because I liked the idea. I thought that the idea was, it was important that an idea like that get out. And um, after reading the synopsis and reading the, which I'm very bad at reading, uh, reading texts because they're very, very dry to me when, um, when I read them. But this, this, this hit me. This really knocked me off my feet. And I said, wow, this is, this is, uh, this is so interesting, and uh, it's, 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 it's an idea that has to get out there, that people can understand that during times of war, people find, find each other, and uh, they, they are human beings at the end of the day, and each of them has to survive, and, and we are from two different peoples, but uh, you know, even, even in a war, the hatred is something that is there, but, but you know, it, 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 it comes together and, and whoever hasn't seen the movie, I think should see it. Uh, I, I, I think the movie, unfortunately movies in Israel don't do well. And uh, Moshe Edri, who is like, like uh, Mike said, is such a dear friend of mine and, uh, and his, that he is such a great guy and he is the man, I think, who moved the movie industry in Israel to where it is today. Absolutely. And uh, did it uh, extremely well. And, well, he, he liked it. He just told me uh, quietly, he said, we won't make money on it. And I said, you know what? We won't make money on it, but I think that the message has to get out. And he said, you know, I like the message too. So he came on with us. And 
And Mike, Mike came out to be a great director, and I must say that it was uh, fantastic to, to be on the set with him. I mean, I wasn't there all the time. He, he did all the work, and I just came to enjoy myself a bit. I'm showing, but, uh, show, I'm showing pictures of that, of the, of the set. And, and I can just say that, that to, be, to be there on the set and to see things being done and to see the actors who were, those were the two, one Israeli and one Egyptian who, the Egyptian was really Egyptian, by the way. And, uh, and, and my mother ha was born in Egypt, so I have Egyptian ties as well. And um, the, the two of them coming together gave a great, great feeling, I think, to all of us. And, uh, and seeing, seeing this happen on the scene and Mike making it happen, we'll put it that way, was really great. Both throw down our weapons in the sand and drive away from here. And go where? You will come with me. Or be your prisoner. How lucky for me. The war is over, you idiot! We'd say anything to take that jeep. Two soldiers, one jeep. One goal. Survival. You up there? You talk to me? No, to Moshe Dayan. What do you want? How is this going to end? Did I kill you? Will you kill me? I'm willing to discuss a way out of here. All right, let's hear it. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Azimuth. Well, you know, the, me the message is even more important today with what's going on around the world here in the States. And it's a message of compromise. You know, nobody's going to get everything they want. But in order to survive, we can't do it alone. You know, we have to, you know, uh, join forces and, and sometimes compromise. And that's what the story's about. We had two wonderful actors, Iftah Klein, who played the Israeli, and Sami Sheikh, who played the Egyptian, uh, and we were very fortunate. Now, uh, by the way, you mentioned your mom. How is she doing? Uh, as we say in Hebrew, Yom Asar, Yom Basar, some days are better than others. Uh, we see her every day, and she's, uh, she's, she's holding on. She, she's 92 and a half, as she always says, and uh, I would say you count until 10, you count the half years, and then afterwards from 90, you start counting the half years. And, um, but she, she's holding on, and uh, we're, we're, we're enjoying her once in a while. In other words, she's, when she, she's uh, very sharp in general, but, you know, sometimes at that age, you're, you're less sharp. You know, but, you know, she is, and always has been, uh, what I consider a lady. She's a real lady. And no matter what, what her age, uh, she's so elegant, a great artist. And uh, please give her my, my love and my best regards. Um, and, and speaking of that, tell me a little bit about, you know, your mom was born in Egypt, right? Right. And my, mom, my mom was born in Egypt in uh, 1928. And uh, sh her family were a family of Jews who were in real estate in reality. Uh, 
um, well-to-do. I mean, not her, her family was less well-to-do, but her outer family was, uh, were, were merchants and, and mainly uh, real estate people. And, um, and she grew up there. Unfortunately, the tragedy of her life was that at four years old, her father died. Um, he died of uh, heart trouble and things that today he, he wouldn't have died of. And uh, my grandmother brought up her two children, her older brother and her, um, in Egypt um, during those years. Uh, she went to a French school and to an English school, which was of the time the right thing to bring up a child. And uh, she... Um, she grew up to be a wonderful person. Uh, she, her family, I mean, she and her brother were big Zionists. Her brother was the communi communications person of the Haganah. Um, and the uh, Haganah and the Aliyah bet the clandestine the Aliyah. And uh, so she joined in and helped, and they were they were they were in uh, Zionist youth movements, etc. And, and my father, your father in Israel, or or my in, father in Israel. My father had come from Salonika in 1935. He was uh, he was born in 24, so he was 11 years old when he came to Israel to Palestine at the time, and uh, went to school. And he also was naturally in the youth movements and the scouts and. Uh, and uh, he joined the Haganah. He joined the Haganah when he was 18. Um, and uh, he, in the Haganah, was sent to Egypt to bring in illegal immigrants into the country. And by the way, the funny anecdote that I know that he didn't even know, because he would have definitely told me about it, is that Eli Cohen, the famous uh, spy, may he rest in peace, right. uh, was also um, a shaliach in, in Egypt, and he and he and my father were together there, and uh, they worked together, and there are pictures of the two of them hugging. So my father knew that there was a guy called Eli Cohen, but I don't think that he connected the two with Eli Cohen, the, the spy. And, um, and uh, they brought a lot of Jews to Israel, and a lot of stories. I mean, we don't have time for that, but I mean, the stories were great. And among the things, uh, since my uncle was the communications guy, um, he met my mother. And at one point, he was beat up by, uh, by the British, and uh, he had to hide. So he quickly went into my uncle's house, and the story is that he hid under, under my mother's bed. <laughs> and uh, so... Uh, so that's how it the, is. That's how it is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's the story, Mike. You don't have to. Your imagination goes wild sometimes. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, she was 18 years old, and he brought her back as an Olach Hadashah to Israel. And they got married the next year in, in, in uh, Tel Aviv. Wow. And, and, and now just moving to another part of your life, uh, and that's with Maccabi in Tel Aviv. Uh, the, you know, as I mentioned, the, the most famous uh, basketball team ever uh, in Israel who won the European champion six, I think six times, the, the uh, you know, Danny Menken's wonderful film On the Map. Yeah. Was, was it 1977, was it? It was 77. 77 when they won against the Soviet team uh, and won the uh, European championship, which is amazing. Uh, I, I gather there are no uh, league games taking place now, are there? There are, there are. You'd be surprised. There's one tonight, as a matter of fact. And uh, the cra it's crazy. I say I, I, I was against it, so I can say it's crazy. But um, what happened is, is that uh, you know during the Corona, we stopped. Uh, naturally, everybody stopped. We stopped. Uh, we were having a great season in the international league. And we were number one in the Israeli league, and uh, and we had to stop playing. Uh, so we stopped playing, and uh, about half of our players, you know, we all are an Israeli team, but we have a lot of American players, and and most of our, and not most, half of our American players uh, went back to the states uh, to be with their families there, 
during the corona, and half of them stayed because they thought it would be safer in Israel. They were right, definitely. Um, among them, by the way, Amare Stoudemire, who was a, a big star in the who was a big star in the NBA, he played for the Knicks and others. And um, and uh, then we uh, they decided that since the corona they thought was passing, they could renew the league. They did it the same in the soccer league and the same in, in uh, basketball. So we started playing again, and uh, we've been playing for the past uh, three weeks or so. With, co- with, a crowd, crowd. with crowds or without? No crowds, no crowds. No it's crowd. ridiculous. We, we sit, I mean, the owners are the only ones who go. Uh, we're allowed. The uh, Ministry of Health is very, very particular and stringent on the rules of how you can do it. We have these tags. They check your fever. Uh, you have to sit with about five meters away from the others. And uh, so we, we renewed playing, and now uh, we have coming to the end of it, we have another 10 days or so of basketball and that'll be it. But uh, as it is, it's crazy because with all the new measures, uh, we're still playing basketball. And, um, but it's, uh, for, for me, it's a, it's a hobby naturally. It's not a profession because professions like that, you can go bankrupt. Um, and, uh, your, your other hobby, your other hobby was my movie, which uh, you can also go. Back. Right, right, right. <laughs> No, but that, that, that I must say that I always loved the movie industry. I love watching movies and, uh, and I really, you know, even the Israeli movies, which they used to call Boekas movies, which were not exactly uh, great, uh, great accomplishments, but, you know, it's part, part of Israeli society, part of Israeli uh, being, I'd say. And uh, whoever has not gone through the Boekas movies cannot be a real Israeli, just like not going to the army. And uh, anybody who didn't see Kuni Lemel is not an Israeli. I mean, you know, my wife who came from the States, she knew Kuni Lemel very well. So um, there, 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 um, no question that I, I enjoyed seeing it. And when I met years ago, I met uh, Moshe Edry, and he kept on telling me, listen, until you've produced a movie, you're not, you've not done something in life. And I said, you know, I have never done that in life. And I was always intrigued on how it happened. So I did a first movie with my friend Itzik Wolf and his son, Amir, who was uh, first time directing a movie. Wonderful movie, um, by the way. Really wonderful. A wonderful movie. movie. I thought it was a great movie, but naturally great movies don't make money. That's what I understood from uh, Moshe. And um, then uh, then uh, when Mike came with Azimut, which I really was, uh, was uh, very excited about the whole subject and doing it. So. Uh, that was a great, great thing. And it was my second hobby, as he said. Uh, and then um, Moshe, I said to Moshe, he said, I think that'll be my last movie. And he said, no, there's never a last movie. <laughs> well, my dear, dear friend, uh, next time find a virtual background of uh, Kvash Mariao so I can see, uh, you know. We'll try to find, or we'll try to ask uh, Zoom to uh, arrange that. To create a Kvash Mariao. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, virtual background. Uh, please give my love to uh, uh, Stacy. Uh, and thanks for joining me. Uh, you're starting the uh, weekend. Uh, I'm going to go to sleep and start the weekend tomorrow. Well, I started the weekend yesterday. I finished the weekend today. You know, tomorrow okay. we we Yanni work, but uh, now we're in half lockdown, three quarter lockdown. I don't exactly know, so. We're locked down starting of the week. Well, I'm, you know, I hope and pray uh, to see you not virtually, but, uh, you know, in person very soon so we can celebrate. Uh, and thanks for joining me. Uh, Thank you for having me. And it was, it was a lot of fun. And, uh, and I really can't wait to see you. It's about time that you got here. It's been too long. Yeah. Uh, all my love, and uh, thank you folks for watching us, and uh, see you next time uh, on my channel with my friends. Stay safe, and uh, oh, don't forget my motto, Carpe Diem. That's my motto, Udi, you know that, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I know very well. Seize the day, that's what we have to do. Thanks, folks, and shalom. Shalom.